what those things are, but I'm just saying that they weren't always on the same page. They weren't necessarily from the same root, right. same political root and orientation. But um, as I said, um, Right Honorable Barrow has apologized for not looking into the well-being of Mr. Esquivel, not following up right. in that interim when, when there had been a uh, when relations had sort of frozen over between the Esquivels and the Dean Barrow-led UDP. Right. And, and I think to move on to that no is the fact that there are still um, officials still coming in, um, paying their respects. I see the Attorney General, um, Magali Marin Young, putting her, um, her thoughts into the condolence book. And I believe this is an opportunity where there is the, is, I think, is this, I think we're changing the guard now, or, th or I, th I think we just did. I think we just did, I yeah. think we just did. Again, this happens on a routine basis. I think it's every hour. If I'm yes, Jules. I believe so, yeah. Right, and, and this is what you're witnessing here at the government house in Belize City on this first day. Uh, marking the state memorial for the Right Honorable Dr. Sir Manuel Esquivel, KCMG, PC, again, two-term Prime Minister of Belize. It seems that uh, the invited persons and the, the, the officials are dealing well enough with the fact that uh, there is a disembodied object, so to speak, mm -hmm. an urn. And, um, you know, it... Um, it's an interesting precedent because usually we have a, a coffin. I am not sure if the uh, the Minita's coffin was opened, but usually you have a coffin and to fixate your intentions or send up your prayers. In this case, we have a man. And, um, it seems to be working. Right. It's a fairly straightforward operation, but it's again unprecedented. Yes. Um, and. And the significance of that shouldn't be lost in this discussion because it reflected, I think, certainly, the fact that while he grew up, Sir Manuel, as you pointed out, grew up Roman Catholic in his, in his later years as an adult, he relied more on the practical side of things, the practical side of science. And there was not necessarily a room, there was not necessarily room for this this religious this religious component of things and and that's the reason why we're not having an official service but rather uh, a state memorial and tomorrow there's going to be a sort of a some a, a quasi celebration with musical artists and a few words from the family and very important figures in Belizean society yes it's our first secular state right funeral. Our very first, and um, but tomorrow there will be a tinge of a religious component right. when the, the bells will toll. Right. The church bells will toll at exactly ten minutes past two o'clock. I think that's what the program says. Right. Um, to sort of signal the the start of tomorrow's um, event and culminating this two days of mourning for the Right Honorable Prime Minister. Dr. Sir Manuel Esquivel. Right. So it's a, uh, it's the interest. It's again a precedent setting uh, memorial because again it's usually a state funeral. Right. But, but um, and tomorrow will be a concert, not a funeral. No religious rites will be performed, mm -hmm. and we know that. Um, a number of the selections tomorrow will be classical. There will be Rachmaninoff. There will be, I believe, um, I saw the, I saw the Rondong, um, some Bach. Yes. As well. Um, so we know that it will be classically tinged, and it will also have some um, some local components. Yes. As well. And apparently, these were the musical um, preferences of Sir Manuel. Um, we see someone else still paying respects. Um, not sure who that 
is specifically? I'm I'm guessing it's one of the invited guests of the family. Right. I I I I think that's what it is in this case, but. Um, Jules, if you could sort of reflect, I, we are looking also simultaneously at the montage that was put together of pictures submitted by the family. And there were two very important, there are three very important photographs that stuck out to me. The, fa the picture, I think, dating back to 1985 when Queen Elizabeth II, um, the nation's head of state, made her she first... Came to this house. Right, at this house in 1985 on her first, um, first visit. Um, I also look at the pictures that he had taken with two U.S. presidents, former the late um, Ronald Reagan and the former president Bill Clinton. Um, if you could sort of reflect on why diplomacy played such an important role in the administrations of Sir Manuel Esquivel, particularly the relationships with the U.S. and the U.K. Well, first of all, I note that the two visits by the Queen happened under. not during George Price what happened both or the under. PUP and I, I don't think that's an accident. I believe the PUP, the genesis of the PUP is a nationalist party. It is an anti-colonialist party and we know that George Price was famously charged for seditious intent mm -hmm. in a, a ludicrous charge by the colonial government at the time for, for saying that they threw toilet paper at the Queen when she arrived in New York. It yeah. was a what is called a ticker tape parade. Right. And he was ridiculously dragged before the court for saying anything that anyone in a free democracy should be able to say. But such such was the colonial rule. Such was the colonial rule. Um, I'm sorry about that song. Their monitor just fell because the breeze the pick up out yeah <laughs> but so i think that it's important that um the british certainly from the british perspective that they saw um sir manuel as more welcoming he had a british wife he had studied briefly in the uk and he also um if you know sir manuel he was very open to foreign direct investment that sort of thing mm -hmm. so um Certainly the relation with the with the US as well. We know that during his during his term, um, eighty four to eighty nine is when the DA became very active in Belize and they were involved in the spraying of marijuana fields, etc. And and he was criticized at the time for being too friendly with the US. We know that that spraying of Paraquat, I believe, on marijuana fields did affect other crops, did affect beekeepers. So it was controversial and we know that the, the, the drug smuggling out of Belize was a major industry. So I'm saying that he, he certainly was seen as closer to the United States on a number of issues and certainly closer to the British because the UDP, the, let's not forget the loyal and patriotic order of the BMA. It's it has a strong pro-colonial bent in its history and the PUP is strongly anti-colonial. So I certainly think that um, under the UDP 84 to 89, there was a closer relationship with Washington and with London and those, those were, uh, they were clear expressions of that. Certainly Mr. Reagan uh, also met with Mr. Price. We know there's this famous video of Mr. Price giving that uh, a quite uh, remarkable speech there at the White House. So it's not that relations were not normal with the U.S., but I think they found uh, in 1984 they found a more willing partner in Esquivel, and, and that's because the, the the PUP has always been, to its credit, anti-colonialist, anti-imperialist, right? And I think by 89 um, that ship had sort of sailed, and then by 1998 they, they the PUP was as pro-capitalist and right-wing as as the UDP was. So uh, everything that diverges eventually converges again. Right. Right. And 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 you and I'm so glad that you sort of put all of that into context because it illustrates how oftentimes the political climate is untenable. It it changes. It it diversifies over time and. 
we've seen how that changed at the end of the 21st century to what we're experiencing now in the in the 20th the end of the 20th century into the beginning of the 21st century and what we're experiencing now um, and I think this is a reflection of each of the pillars that our political leaders have put in on behalf of Belize and certainly Sir Manuel's contribution was integral in all of that. Yes, and when we look at his, his legacy, um, you know, it's interesting because the legacy is physical, yes, mm -hmm. the infrastructure project. You mentioned the central bank earlier. Right. Um, I was, we, we received a quick uh, correction call that it was not 50 million, they did it for less than that. Okay. Um, well, I think that was the number that was being used as part of the propaganda. Propaganda. Then. Yes. yes yeah, they follow the propaganda. Right. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying that I think that, um, that that central bank is certainly one of the proudest legacies of Sir Manuel. It, it, it remains in impeccable condition. It is uh, invulnerable. Um, the, the, the level of uh, the, the quality of construction that went into it. And it is certainly a proud emblem of the financial solidity of the currency and of the economy. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's important that such symbols exist. I despise the design, but that's personal. <laughs> you know, I, I would have, at the time, I certainly would have preferred a more modern style building, but that's a, you know, that, that Maya thing. You know, I have my own views on it, but I'm just saying, it remains and it's still when you go into it, it 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 does not look antiquated it does not look run down thanks to the management of the central bank so it was a proper purpose-built building mm -hmm. these buildings have to it can be no semi dimmy building right. it has to demonstrate that this this place the central bank of belize controls the commanding heights of the economy mm -hmm. and and that and that building says that you know, we see drone shots of it to this day in Central Bank ads, and it still looks spectacular. Indeed, it does. So I'm saying the, the legacy is not only these physical things. The, it is really something when you leave a legacy, as Mr. Price did, that your personal style imbues a legacy of its own. Mr. Price's unmatched humility, his asceticism, his actually monkish devotion, to nation building is what we remember of him. There were untold infrastructural and physical developments, the construction of Belmapan, all these things that happened during Mr. Price's tenure. He built the nation. But when we think of Mr. Price, we don't think of the physical things he did. We think of the of the of the moral uh, the, he left our moral account in such a surplus mm -hmm. right he was such a man of, uh, a man of such unimpeachable integrity mr price and when we think of mr scavell certainly we think of someone for whom integrity was axiomatic it was engendered in his being it was not an effort it was not a speech it was who he was he was and that i really think is the is the legacy of great men we don't look at what they do. We look at who they were, great men and women. We don't look at the physical remains that they left. We look at what they imbued us with, a sense of nationalism in the case of Mr. Price, a sense of dignity and democracy in the case of Mr. Esquivel, and decency, an essential, unshakable decency. I think I could not have said it better myself, Jules, the, the, that all of what you've just said, the entire embodiment of that, the cadence and the spirit of that led, as I've repeated throughout this, this presentation, the, the pillar on which the decisions that he took as the leader of government for those two terms were built upon. But I think, by and large, it was a reflection of who he was as a father, as a teacher, and just an overall Belizean, a, a humble servant to this country. And I think that was, by and large, what drove and, and, and built on, on the spirit on which his integrity is fostered on. I think, I think that's really what it is. 
and I think that in the years to come, when history continues, the leaders that have succeeded um, Sir Manuel will probably would, can only hope that their, that when history takes account of their um, of their tenure, I think they can only hope that it will be remembered in the same way. I, I, and I, I think that's really what the best that they can hope for is that it's remembered in the same way. We, we have been exposed in such measurable ways to so many different things. And, and I think and that's because we're living in the social media era. But the current prime minister and the last one, I think, will perhaps think, will hope that Belizeans remember them in the same kind of way when it's their turn. And we're not saying that that's going to happen anytime soon, but when we come to that inevitable juncture, I hope that they will see themselves and the decisions they made in the same kind of way. Um, and, and how Belizeans think of that, I think, um, will perhaps, well, I mean, I, that will be, will be told eventually, yeah. I think that the, the two words, or the word that we would say, because Mr. Price and Mr. Esquivel are very different people. Yes. And they were very different leaders. But the one thing we can agree on with both of them was that they were humble. Yes. I don't think we will, in 20 years, be praising Mr. Musa, Mr. Barrow, or Mr. Brissinger for humility. We may surely praise them for other excellent things. character traits which they epitomize but that the single thread between the first two prime ministers of Belize for the first 17 years of nationhood the single thread is humility we've left that behind now <laughs> but I'm just saying that it's important that we key in on that as the commonality one was an arch-Catholic, one was an atheist. One wore wear bearer, one wore suit and tie. They are about to move the urn. We have the urn party here. Um, so they are taking the urn back to the home. At number eight, We're taking the urn back to the home at number eight, David Street. Right. And then it will be brought here tomorrow for the second part of this two-day memorial for the former Prime Minister. The Right Honorable Dr. Sir Manuel Esquivel KCMG, former Prime Minister of Belize from 1984 to 1989 and 1989 to 1993 to 1998. We're remembering him on this day. As we reported, he died on the 10th of February at age 81. He leaves behind his wife, who's the chief mourner, Lady Esquivel, and their children, David, Laura, and Ruth. And they are here on this occasion. And as we now witness the urn taken back to the family house on number on Daly Street in Belize City. You're watching a special nationwide broadcast of this very important occasion. We're remembering Sir Manuel Esquivel. We have members of the Belize Defense Force now heading out. The state memorial furnished by members of the BDF. The funeral director is Warrant Officer Class 2, Delton Morgan. The regimental Sergeant Major for 1st Infantry Battalion. The urn party commander is Major Ruben Kowal. Escorts to the urn are Captain Jairo Che and Captain Galen Roboteau. The cushion escort is Captain Adrian Bosch. The sword party commander is Captain Elmer Mo. As you've seen, the firing party commander is Staff Sergeant Glanstone Palacio. The, on this occasion, the chief mourner, in this case, Lady Esquivel, has been assigned an aide at the camp. And that aide de camp is Major Megan Aspinall. The state memorial is being facilitated by the four sergeant major, warrant class officer one, 
Wilfredo Mahano, a graduate of the NCO Leadership of Excellence and Sergeant Major Academy. What we're witnessing now is the actual slow march of the urn. And again, music furnished by the Belize Defense Force Band. And Jules, the weather out here today, very wet, skies are overcast, sort of gives us a somber but reflective, introspective moment, I think, for Belize and Belizeans who are tuned into this broadcast. Won't you agree? Yes, indeed, Dale. Um, <laughs> the, the weather, we would say, is very British. Um, it feels like a, 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 a normal day in London. Um, in terms of the cold and the the constant uh, the, the steady drizzle and um, indeed it's a day that lends itself to somber reflection upon the life of of Sir Manuel and we are fortunate that a biography has been written about him um, and we know that a great biography was also written about Mr. Price and we certainly hope that this will be done for all of our leaders mm -hmm. um, because it's it's really important that we catalog the important role that each of uh, them and, played and, and, and the formative years of these persons because you learn so much about Sir Manuel by learning of his his um his background and his years in teaching he was once a union leader the, yes. the uh, for the christian uh, democratic union yes. he fought for for better pay for teachers yes right um you know he wrote for the newspaper for many years the chamber reporter yes so these are extremely important uh, that you can see how small lives can become can end up in a <laughs> a uh, uh, state memorial as yeah. it were in this case yes but even though the nation is collectively mourning the passing of the nation's second post-independence prime minister it offers an opportunity for us to think reflect inwardly and outwardly where Belize has come where Belize is and where Belize is going. I think that this is a history, a historical lesson for everybody to remember and to reflect and to appreciate very difficult sacrifice, sacrifices when you're in leadership that you have to make. And a lot of times, and as Ms. Cafe concedes in, the, in, her, in her book, um, Still Waters, which is a fantastic read, by the way. It um, Lots of times, Sir Manuel had to give up very important things, very important milestones in his own family to make these very difficult decisions on behalf of Belize and Belizeans. The thousands of people that relied on his stewardship as the nation's head of government, The this is an opportunity to, in some measure, say, Thanks for a yeoman's work. Indeed, a life's work. Right. Right? Because we know that um, that politics and national leadership are all consuming. Mm. Um, but we should never forget that uh, in his later life, Sir Manuel was a very doting grandfather. Indeed. I believe he was grandfather to, I want to venture the number, but I want to say, uh, certainly more than six mm -hmm. that his children uh, his children's um, offspring and he was very doting I know that uh, Roots his daughter Roots children uh, lived with them for many years yes. in the home at 8 Daly Street and he was such a doting grandfather he would take his granddaughter to and from school and he was a great comfort to her and um, and that granddaughter that you're speaking about, um, Chelsea, has done um, really well as a culinary master in her own right, receiving accolades recently. 
and the, I'm sure that Sir Manuel and the entire family were very proud of her achievement. Indeed. Um, so, you know, I think that if you ask him what his greatest accomplishments were, he, he would probably point to the accomplishments of his grandchildren. Indeed. Um, because I know that was really at the center of his life later on, and, and um, it certainly gave him life. Because while he was um, politically involved, he was never politically obsessed. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. I think that's a fundamental difference from what we've seen with leaders now, not just at the national level, but at the municipal level too, this obsession with the holding on to power. And he teaches us a valuable lesson with his own life, the fact that you don't have to be obsessed with power and, and 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 almost ascribing God unto yourself to do right by the Belizean people and he did that throughout his entire political career even in the de and I keep on stressing the decisions that he has made um, thinking only of the best interest of the country even if it meant co co costing him votes at the election and he'd never be elected again or the fact that you run the risk of losing in such a spectacular way he did that with the thought process that ultimately Belizeans by and large will benefit and that's the way I think that his family and his supporters would certainly want Sir Manuel to be remembered. Okay, so we see uh, the vehicle with the urn leaving now, the, um, the BDF van with the urn mm -hmm. and I think that but signals the end of this presentation on the first day for the state memorial for the right honorable Dr. Sir Manuel Amadeo Esquivel. Um, Jules it's been a, an interesting three hours um, spending this particular time in our history witnessing this unfold certainly with uh, a journalist and a, and a newsman of your stature helping us to appreciate the context of Sir Manuel's life and what it meant to Belize and Belizeans. So um, I truly thank you for this opportunity to have you know, spent these last couple of hours with you to discuss the man who Sir Manuel was. And so we'll be picking up this tomorrow. Um, um, we'll be bringing to you the second day of this very important historical event. So um, on behalf of everyone here, here at the press office and we'd like to thank um, the media organizations who've collaborated for this effort. Certainly Love FM and Love Television, Channel 7 and Channel 5 and those who are rebroadcasting it to their listeners. We say thank you on behalf of everyone and enjoy the remainder of your Tuesday.